let me talk to you about, you know, and, and obviously that, this has proceeded for the last 30 years. And different ones at different times, nothing like, you know, that or, you know, pornography or, you know, sleeping around, things that we might have done when we were idiot, teenagers or idiot, still in sin or whatever. And some of you are like, yeah, that's me now. That's fine. That's where you're at right now. That's why you need to apply these things now. Okay? But say for me this year, if, you know, this is, this is another great one, is Ryan and I never get sick. Very, very rarely. We're super healthy. We're super onto what we do. And so it's very, very rare. This year, though, whatever that devil was that came around a month or so ago, Rye got it and, and got ill and I was nursing him. Well, I don't think there's but you know, just being there for him. And then um, two days later, it, it hit me. And I was like, dude, I'm familiar with being sick because I don't get sick. Um, and my body just felt, felt like something was wrapped around my spine. It was so weird. Now, having been separate from sickness for so long, it literally felt like a devil wrapped around my spine. Because I could feel it trying to make me crawl over and get that, those achy feelings and move. Um, but anyway, what it did do to me, though, is it made me extremely... Because when your energy level goes that low, so we're vibrating. If anybody has studied physics or biology or anything, I studied Bachelor of Science at Melbourne University. So studying some of these things, to look at the human body and, and at what... Um, rate that we, we vibrate at. Our human bodies are constantly in vibration. Yeah. But when you get sick, how the vibration literally begins to drop down. Wow, yeah. And you know, if you, if you got cancer or something, you're literally vibrating in the 40s as opposed to the 60s or, or even hitting towards the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I began to notice things that I would consume that I could literally feel I was already vibrating low. My body, my energy levels were very low. And I would take things into my body and they made me stay the same or get lower. Because I was more sensitive to it because my energy levels were already so low. Yeah. So I normally have a coffee, a venti style coffee, just once every day. That's how I you know, have, a, have them some point in the morning. And I was sucking back on my coffee, but I'm sick now. And as I'm taking it, I'm talking, I was only like not even a centimeter or two into it. My energy, my vibration began to drop. Doesn't caffeine stimulate you? Doesn't it give energy? Oh, caffeine uses energy at a rapid rate of knots, so you might get access to an amount. It's like putting your foot down in your car. So it's kind of like this. But when you're already that low, the tank's on empty, you don't want to be doing that. And I realized that caffeine was not loving me back while I was sick. And I realized that without realizing it, I was actually having caffeine like even in something like a matcha, when I thought it was a more healthy option, or tea, more healthy, they all got caffeine in them. Kombucha got caffeine in them. And I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you that in that state of unwellness, I could see that caffeine did not love me back, but it was hidden when I was in a state of goodness. Yeah. I didn't know that it might drop my vibration down a little bit, it might drop my health down a little bit. I didn't notice that because I was already doing really great. Yeah. So, but when I was sick, I couldn't afford that. Yeah. So I recognized caffeine doesn't love me back. So while I was sick, I said to Rye, I don't want to have um, caffeine for a little while I'm sick, I don't want to have any caffeine. I just want to put things in me that keep me the same or preferably increase me. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually looked up like a local juice bar and we went and got a juice instead of a, um, nice. a coffee. And immediately, I actually was that flat at the time, I just wanted to go home. After we'd done our errands, I just needed to go home. But within five minutes or so of having the juice, I began to pick up. And right can tell, because when I pick up, I start. <laughs> I was silent before, but he was thanking the Lord, and then... <laughs> no more Jesus for me. No, I'm drinking the juice right now, speaking of it, because that made me go, great, I'm going to cash in on yep. the grace right now. I've been showing something while I'm sick and I'm just going to cash in on it. So while I was sick, I couldn't afford to have caffeine. It was going to make me feel worse. Mm. But I ended up being sick. That thing lingered around for the longest ever. And who else has had it? It just yeah. lingered. Yeah. Um, that went on for days, but that was great. It was probably, honestly, by the time I felt no effects of it, would have been 10 days. Mm. Perfect timing yeah. to break out of it. So I maximized those 10 days and I didn't take any caffeine during those 10 days. Now I will say I did go through caffeine withdrawals as did Ryan because Ryan jumped, we jumped on the bandwagon together and um, we both had at least one day, poor Edie saw us, where we were just like, because <coughs> we had full ball caffeine withdrawals 
And then, headache, whatever. And then, um, and then they're gone. Now, I've noticed in Rye, because I'm an observer of Rye, that was like a month ago or whatever, his energy now is at a much higher continual level than he's off the caffeine. So his decision to maximize the grace is loving him back. Because he was getting more tired in the afternoons, at night, different things, you know, just normal stuff. Or was he depleting his energy, putting his foot to the floor with his caffeine early in the morning, and then by afternoon and evening, he didn't have anything left in the tank. So him coming off the caffeine, me coming off the caffeine, we're finding our energy levels are stabilized and they are consistent throughout the day. Now again, I'm not preaching to you to come off the caffeine. I'm talking about God's grace. When I, I just noticing something, I went, I'm going to run with that. That's going with the grace. I also had, um, during that time, I just went, it was awesome. I actually dropped off a whole bunch of things while I was sick. Because I would normally always have a chocolate bar in the morning. As, I know, I'm revealing all my... I just said we're really healthy now. I'm saying coffee, venti coffees and chocolate bars. Yeah, but it's dark chocolate. That's my excuse. Anyways, it would be a full chocolate bar with caramel and dairy. Anyways, point being is when I was sick, um, I did it. Didn't feel good. Gone. Gone. I know, I'm not saying I can't do it. I'm saying the addiction to it. I was doing it every single day. When I, I'm a very addictive personality, I know that when I get onto something, it's on. So while I was sick, these are the things I decided, because they didn't make me feel good, so it was easy to choose not to do it yet, because right. they didn't love me. That's going with the grace. Wow. When it's not loving you and it doesn't feel good, go, I'm not going to do it then. Drop it, drop it, drop it, right then while the grace is there. Because I watch people, the grace period will be there, 10 days, 14 days, if you're real blessed, maybe even a month, and then it stops. The grace is gone and you missed it because you wanted that thing. Yeah, you, want you made yourself have it even when you didn't want it. So I knew I was addicted. So I knew I, my flesh enjoyed it. But at that time, I had grace to realize this isn't making me feel good. I'm going to roll with this. I dropped during that sickness last month, caffeine, chewy, which is a big deal for me because I chew like there's no tomorrow. Um, because it's aspartame in it. And aspartame is not good, it's proven to be not good, but it was something that I just, I enjoyed to enjoy. I dropped that because it wasn't loving me while I was sick. Great. Chocolate bars. Uh, what else did I need? Oh, even just, okay, even just some fast foods that I was doing. Um, no, I'm not saying I'm all off them, but what I then supplemented was I decided things I want to do that will probably really be good for me while, I, while I'm sick, I started drinking water. I used to always say, you know, I need flavoured, I need flavouring. Yeah. Eateries, the same, right? <laughs> and why would be sucking back with water bottles? And I just didn't like it. When I was sick, I was, I was thirsty. I was dehydrated. So I started drinking water. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep this going. Good job. So again, it was like, I used that. What Satan planted for evil it was so good for me. I am now drinking probably a minimum two liters a day, which I, I don't think I've ever done that in my life. I feel ace. I've been making. I made quality life food right. choices while I was sick. Awesome. And then I've just said to her, can we keep that going? Which he wanted to do anyways. I also, while I was sick, got on vitamin C. Or we got on zinc. We, we already take um, a, a um, big pure supplement, multivitamin a day. But we added some extras in and we've just decided we'll just keep them going. These different things, we just run with the grace. We went with, what did I say? Go with the grace. That's yeah. Yeah. We We... Go with the grace. <laughs> we, went. we went with we the went grace. With we went with the grace. But, you know, that type of principle, I'll do that with anything. So I might find myself going, I'm bending down to pick something up, and then at the end of the day going, I'm getting a sore back, right? I should squat down to pick things up. And then I think the benefits of squatting are really, really good for your lower body. So then I start squatting. I'm getting the benefits of I'm not getting a sore back anymore. And I'm getting a strong lower body. So you see, as soon as something starts to hurt you, or starts to not love you back, or starts to make you feel sick, or starts to make you get a headache, you get motivated to make a change. Yeah. Yeah. And you might have wanted a strong, stronger lower body, and the way God does it is by taking his wink off the fact that you bend down all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You're bending at the waist all the time. And you used to do that and you didn't get a sore back. Now suddenly you start getting a sore back. Okay, yeah. it's time to start squatting. Right. Then you start squatting down to pick things up. And you hope, now I'm using random examples, I know, but you can interpolate for yourself. Because these are things, now I just, whenever something's like, it's not loving me anymore. It's hurting me in some way. I don't enjoy it anymore. I feel like I'm being ripped off by it. I go, great, that's my cue. I'm going to roll with that. Because the desire's not even there to do it now. 
Yeah. It's just a habit. I'm going to roll with that. Are you getting this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Because this is the thing. God's way, the Bible says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. When God kicks in, it makes things easy. Wow. Yeah. Things just peter off easily and naturally and with new desires. Wow. That's what happens when God, when you've invited God into your addiction. So when you do things with the Lord and under his unction and his inspiration, let's look at verse uh, 28 of Matthew 11. This is what he wants you to do today with your addiction. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. You've been trying to break this thing and this thing is just burdening you now. You want it gone. He says, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me. Let me lead you. The yoke man, they join two oxen together. And the more mature one, the stronger one, the more experienced one would lead the way. God is saying, I want to lead you out of this addiction. Okay? Now, the way I'm going to do it when you yoke to me is I'm going to let you start feeling the pain of the bad decision that you're doing. So that you go, I don't like this anymore. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to let you feel the pain, the discomfort, the consequences of that thing. Don't get upset with God. Thank God. Yeah, come on. Thank God. This Woo. is great. Yeah. This is really helping me because it's hard to break something when you're really enjoying it. It's only bringing you pleasure all the time. But as soon as you're doing it and now you feel dirty, now you feel guilty, now you feel physically sick, now you're getting a headache, now you're suffering physical pain, now you're feeling ripped off, now it's like, oh, I'm not even getting what I want out of it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, this is it's a good time to Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He's going to lead you out of it. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy. easy. Yeah. My burden is light. light. See, when you do th- when you do things on your own, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's taxing. Yeah. It takes a long time and you're going to come back to it. Yeah. When you do things with God, it's light and easy. It wasn't hard for me. It's like you've been drinking that that amount of coffee for years and years and years. How did you come off it just while you were sick? Easy. The grace was in. When you go with the grace. Now, I've shared a testimony before, like years and years ago, when I was young, Ryan and I were young married, and we had this desk of all the kids' homeschool stuff and all of Ryan's my ministry stuff. And it was like, you know, before you know it, it was basically a dump within the house. We just had so much stuff that I needed to sort out. But I've got four little kids. I'm a full-time minister. I'm still studying. You know, we had so much on. And it was just like, I'll get there one day. It's not really a big deal. Anyway, I'm doing my prayer time in the morning this day. I'm walking around. I'm praying in tongues. And every time I walk past that desk, you know, I used to always be like, I should deal with that desk one day. I should deal with that desk one day. I'm walking past the desk. And this desire is rising up in me to do the desk. And I'm like, okay. Okay. So while I'm praying, I start sorting out the desk. I'm tidying up the desk. I'm clearing things off. I'm talking to the Lord. I'm getting rid of junk. I'm clearing it. Now it's just beautiful. It's spacious. It's empty. Things are where they need to go. And I'm like, wow, that was so easy when the grace kicks in. Yeah, wow. Right? A little bit later that day, I think Ryan and arrived home from work. There's a knock at the door. A friend of mine arrives around. And this is back in the day when um, desktop computers were all the rage, not, not laptops and phones and everything. They were not those. Anyway, she rocks up at my house with a brand new $1,600 Dell computer and had the the screen, the keyboard, the speakers, everything. And they wanted to. Her and her man rocked around and they wanted to set it up for us straight. And they just bought this for us and wanted to set it up for us. And anyway, that was amazing in itself, right? That was amazing. But what was amazing is the desk would have been so embarrassing because that was the desk. And it had literally been like that for probably seven months. That day, I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to clean it. See, this is the thing. Sometimes as well, you'll be sitting there jamming away at your game and you're getting this desire to go clean out the garage. Who knows if your car's about to arrive? But you're like, no, no, no. I've got to finish this level. And the next one. And the next one. Oh, no, it's a good time. But the grace was there. You weren't, this is the thing, right? You keep jamming, but you're not enjoying it anymore. Because your heart is actually out in the garage because that's where the Spirit of God is leading you to be. That is life in the Spirit. I know that seems like, well, is that good cleaning your garage? That's everything. 
That's how you learn to be led by the Spirit. Yeah. It's where your heart is. Your heart's out in the garage, your fingers are on the keypad. Right? That's where you're losing out. Your heart is dancing out there free from ciggies, but your fingers are pulling it back to your mouth again. But you got to go with your heart, and when the grace is there, go with the grace. Yeah. Move on it, move on it, and you're going to start seeing everything change in your life. Wow. And you'll become a professional grace girl, yeah. which is called life in the spirit. Yeah. Because it's every area of life. I'm talking about addictions, but we've spoken about life yeah. in the spirit in yeah. several other sermons yeah. I've preached this year. Yeah. When you go with God, it's easy. It's light. Yeah. It's not trying an effort. You cease from your own effort when you've entered this rest Jesus is speaking about. That's what Hebrews 4 speaks about. Hang on. All right. 